So I have prepared the sketch and some stuff in advance just because it's the tedious stuff, but I will just quickly you know, explain what, what we usually do. In, whoops. Go here. Okay. So usually, right, um, as with any character, you have to think about what you want to do. Like I said before, you know, is it something funny? What type of character you want to do? Also, maybe what he's doing at the time. Since this is going to be just a portrait, it's much simpler. But um, you, know, you, you can basically just start with a simple shape, right? And maybe think about where his neck is going to be. You can start very simply, right, to see. Maybe this is an angry dude. You know, in this case, especially if you do maybe a fully rendered piece in the end, it's, it's, sometimes it's actually better to not over sketch, to just go simple with a big fat brush, you know, think about your shapes. And, um, and then you can see, you know, maybe he's, uh, I don't know, he's doing just a little evil laughter. Right, and then we put some ears here. Uh, I don't know, we can give him a hat, since I have a hat. You know, and that's basically already, you know, almost enough for me to start uh, doing a rendered piece. You know, um, I don't know, you can also give him a shirt, for example. Uh, you know, expand this however you like. But this is just typically the way that I like to start. And of course, you know, you need to do maybe a few sketches so it, it becomes a bit uh, nicer. You know, you get a nicer sketch because usually the first ones are not that good. Uh, but that's typically enough, you know. Um, and a hat, for example, or requisites, or I'm not sure what the right word is, is stuff that basically, what I said before, adds story, you know. So you can give him a backpack and he already becomes, you know, uh, your schoolmate, for example. <laughs> I don't know, you know, just, or whatever funny things you want to do, you know. Maybe you can even stick you know, a knife in his, <laughs> in his neck. <laughs> You're like, okay, there is something else, right? So uh, the sketch I've prepared is basically this guy. Um, it followed the same thing. You know, I just did like a little bean shaped, uh, uh, basic shape for his head. Um, I'll, I also did the thing that's what's called an action line. I don't know if any of you are familiar with what an action line is. No? So an action line is basically a line of, usually is more uh, used when we talk about uh, figures and stuff, but you can use it ev everywhere. You know, even your hands have it, faces have it, everything has it. So what is basically an action line is the main line of action that's going on through your character, right? And in this phase, I could just say that this is, that this is a line of action. You know, maybe he got scared and he jumped a bit and now, you know, I, I conform all his body language and the shape of his head is also, you know, curved in that direction to follow this, you know, and it's, it just gives a bit more interest, uh, you know, as opposed to just doing like a static head and then putting this on. You know, if you think a bit about ahead about what he's doing, you can get a much nicer um, drawing, I think. Um, so, you know, just experiment with that, you know, with the, with the, with the body types, we follow usually an S-curve and stuff like that. So just, uh, it's a good thing to try out. Uh, but always you have to have an idea of what he's doing. Whoops. All right. So what I prepared in advance is also these shapes. You know, this is how I, we start usually because these shapes, which I just color in, you know, a, a simple shape. So which will now allow me to paint, paint within it. And I do this for every single item. You know, he has a bit of a shirt, the mouth and eyes, tongue, teeth, some hair. And yeah. Basically, that's it, right? It's already look like something, but this is just the base. You know, now we need to add the shading and lighting and all that stuff that's going to make it uh, look nicer, hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, okay. In this stage, what I like to do first is also go a bit, you know, put some variation to his um, to his base color, right? So if it's just full flat green, it's going to be boring in the end, you know. So, with a nice soft brush, you can just, you know, add a bit of interest. Um, and this is really like a thing that you just push and pull and try out, you know, to see, okay, which color works, which color doesn't, which one I like, you know, which one I don't. Maybe I want to do, I don't know, I want to give him slightly red ears. And maybe I want to go with some purple around the eyes because he's a zombie, right? Let's say that he is. You know, usually also these type of evil characters or whatever have some sort of, you know, eye, eye learner or, or dark spots around their eyes. It makes it look more, 
more scary. Uh, okay. You know, I can bring this up. And I still have the sketch on top, as you may notice, but I, we will get rid of it in the end. Um, yeah, okay, so we can start like that. You know, when I go through with, with all these layers, uh, kind of like this, you know, I like to add some, some variety with a nice big soft brush. I think the, the aspect ratio is a bit, you know, not the right one, so it might be a bit more squished there. So after we're done, you can also check it here if you like. Okay, um, where are we? With the mouse, you know, this is, it's kind of boring, I know, but this is basically just the process that uh, we go through also at work, very common process. Um, and, you know, this is kind of what uh, differentiates people that don't know what they're doing from people that know what they're doing in a way professionally, right? Uh, professionals usually ha always have a process that they can rely on, that they can always uh, use, um, that always works, you know. But that doesn't mean that when in my personal stuff, I use this process all the time. Like I said, I like to experiment, so in my personal time, I get to do whatever I like. Okay, now we can, you know, go inside the mouth, make some shape, oops. If you want to know also, you know, things about <laughs> Procreate or iPad, uh, tips like that, um, I'll be happy to, to, to say something. Okay, where are we with that? We were over here. You know, in this case, I'm gonna select the eyes. And also, you know, the color palette. I chose something that's kind of close together. You know, colors are a big, a big um, topic, but you know, I just chose yellow and green, which are not too much opposing. And then, you know, I use the purple and, and reds as a complementary color, but I use it sparingly. You know, maybe in the years, ideally, I would, I would tone it back a bit so it's not too strong, so it doesn't compete too much. Um, um, but yeah, for the purposes of demonstration, I, I think it's okay. Um, so here, I think we can add a bit of It has to have a bit of a weird look because he's a zombie. Okay, what else? You know, maybe on the mouth. I don't. Know. We could go on the teeth. Let's go there. So, okay. so I usually pick you know the base color that I set up from the start, and then I just you know either go with a different hue or I you know play with the with the saturation or go just a bit, maybe more yellow. And I can just uh, do again with a soft brush. Just create again a bit of variety. You know, maybe even in the back tooth that's there, I can go and make him a bit darker so it will feel like he's in the back. So if I turn off the sketch, see the tooth in the back looks nice. So now we still need the sketch, you know, because that's a, a map, a plan of what we want to do. Um, I mean, if you're good, you you know maybe you don't need, but I kind of need it still to know where to put my lines. Um, so we'll keep on putting some variety in, and soon we'll get to the good stuff. Um, yeah, we can go darker. I guess. Oops. Okay. I don't see much, but the hair is dark anyway. Um, yeah, I think for the variety's sake, this is this is it. All right. So in this case, I chose a, a, you know a process where I, I basically do two layers for shadow, more or less. I de it depends. You can do more if you need it. In this case, since it's a simple character, I don't think we'll need it, but we'll see. Um, and I named them. Um, you know, usually I don't do that. Like many artists, we just throw stuff, you know, and name it final, final, final three. Um, but here I named it, you know, so also you maybe can remember the word. Usually the occlusion, you guys know what occlusion is? So occlusion is actually when two surfaces meet, for example, in between your fingers or when, when I put my hand on the, on the floor, is where light has a very, very difficult job to, um, to, to get to, right? So no matter what the lighting around this is, between my fingers I always have a dark spot. And this is basically occlusion, right? Is the, it actually helps define a lot of form. So 
you know, sometimes I like to start with that and how I do it uh, in this case, I chose the process, you know, using multiply layers and like a bright, I can go bright blue. And this is something, you know, doing pro this, this process really allows you to go uh, back and change stuff uh, fairly quickly and fairly easily um, on the shadow layer. So I'll put this down a bit more. So let's see. So what I'm going to do is start doing the occlusion layer first. So, you know, I can do this. I can, I can cut in some forms you know, within your shape. You know, in, in the end, people many times over um, overcomplicate the main shape, right? The outside shape. And actually, you don't need to. You know, if you want to expose these guy's cheeks, for example, you can just within that shape, you know, you can do this. Right? And it, it starts to create this, um, this shape of a, of a face that's been, you know, dehydrated or whatever. You know, you don't need to change the outside shapes all the time. Um, and the other thing that is good to do is also, you know, play with the hardness of your line or the softness. So, you know, not both edges are, are the same hardness, basically. See, this, is the, this edge is sharper than this one. And that's basically, again, you know, if you, if you do art, you know, you know that maybe if the light is from coming from up top, the surface is getting lit, lit, lit. And then, you know, as more as it turns away from the light, the darker it gets. So because this surface is big, it diffuses the light quite a lot. And then here, it basically just ends, it stops, and then the next fold starts, which is probably going to be lighter on top as well. That's why the bottom edge is, is sharper than the top one, for example. Uh, okay, let's go back. So I can do the. Yeah. Sometimes I also like to start with the main shadow layer, which is not this. We'll, we'll see that in a, in a bit. but. It really just, I like to vary it up. So maybe we have another crease here, right? This is the folds under his, his uh, neck. And here is again where maybe light would have a hard time reaching. Then we go, for example, around the eyes, where the, you know, the eye bags kind of fold in. Maybe I can just. Sometimes this iPad gives me some issues because it's an old one, but it still works. You know, and. With this occlusion layer, every all the time I'm just thinking like of the 3D form of everything, you know, like where these these occlusion layers might happen, you know. In the end, you're inventing a, a character, so you'll never get it perfectly right, right? Uh, that, that like it would be in real life. So just, you know, try to do the best you can and just go with it. You know, you don't need to do everything super perfect. Uh, you know, mistakes are are also a welcome thing. You know, they don't need to make you feel like you need to do everything super perfect, or otherwise it's not good. So here, we can do a bit more of here. And I'm not sure how much that all of that is showing up. Can you guys see OK? Yeah. OK. Um, all right, maybe some occlusion here, where the top I meet the, the skin. Um, and yeah, you know, even for this cartoony stuff, when when I do when we do ears, it's, you know, ears are very simple in a way. When you do real ears, they're much more complex. But you know, here we simplify it. For example, you can do, you know, just this, like a, a as opposite uh, an opposite um, five, or you could just do a circle like this, and maybe another hole like this. You know, I usually like to do some type of five, but it really doesn't matter uh, because it's a made-up cartoony character, so I can do whatever I like. Um, Okay, you know, I guess there would be some occlusion here as well. Um, and and also, you know, I think nowadays when we see all these tutorials and stuff online and people drawing, it always gives you the impression that you need to be fast and this, like this guy is super fast or whatever. And you, it, I, I know I had I struggled with this quite a bit. You know, I I still do sometimes. I feel like I should be faster, but 
you know, when you're learning, especially, don't don't think about that. You know, if speed will come as you as you practice, uh, just think about you know enjoying the you know thinking about what you do and enjoying it, and speed will come. You know, we even at work, we have sometimes you know people that uh, um, actually it happened a few months ago. Uh, one of our artists, you know, came to me and said, well, I feel I should be faster. You know, and I'm really worried. And I was like, but why do you feel? You know, yeah, I was the fast guy, uh, the fast one in the previous company, and uh, and here I'm really struggling. And I was like, it's okay. You know, you're doing really well. I prefer to you, for you to take a bit more time right now. The speed will come. It's okay. You know, that is just to say that if you are good, you know, the speed is not actually that important. We adapt the 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 product timeline to to artists as well, right? So if we, it's just like having two or three artists. If you have one artist, that the timeline is going to look different than if you have three artists. And it goes the same uh, with uh, slower and faster artists. You know, some artists do five characters a week, and some need a, wee a week to do it. You know, but that's if, if the production allows for that, it's fine. You know, we don't really, we're not that focused on speed, really. It's better that you do good art than that you do fast art. That's, that's the message here, basically. OK. And we can go. Here, back to this layer. You know, here with the teeth. So everything kind of has dimensionality, and you know, it's again up to you. It's very uh, creative freedom of how much you want to make it. You, the teeth could be also completely flat, but sometimes I like to, you know, put a bit of shading because, of course, uh, everything is is lit, and the, there is a top lip that will cast a shadow on them. And maybe sometimes it helps to separate them like this. Okay, then I can select the things. And now we can do the tongue. And again, you know, it's just an approximation of, of um, what would be happening. Um, Okay, so let's see without the sketch now. It's starting to look like something, right? Uh, we're starting to come to a place where we won't need it anymore, but for example, to not forget where we still maybe want, you know, because some of these lines that I did in the sketch are basically reminders for me that there's gonna probably be a good place to place some occlusion. So I go I go here so I don't forget and just do this because he has some, some eye bags, it would be good. And since, you know, his expression is um, kind of angry on one eye, you know, uh, we can maybe do a little cut here, and then maybe we can soften this, this edge a bit. Okay, we still have time, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and then you can just play around again. You know, um, with maybe he has this butt chin. You know, you just sl slowly add things that maybe you can find you find interesting. Maybe like this is a bit. Okay, and maybe we can do a thing like this here. All right, and you know, like I said before, everything has. Uh, three dimensions, um, so there is a bit of a leap here that I want to add a bit of shadow on as well. And I can just go around, actually, I can select this and invert the selection so I don't paint on top of the mouth. And I just go like this. All right, maybe we can do a bit of a you know, classic mandatory dots or spots here. Okay, and now for the main shadow. So this is basically where then the form starts to really become more apparent. And this is where you should think uh, when you're doing things like this, just big blocks of shadow. So if I have, if my face is like this, I have a chin sticking out, there's a light on top of me, don't be afraid to put all of this in shadow if needed, right? I can, I can completely just go, um, This, with nice big brushes, is very, very good usually. Um, at least at this stage. All right, and then I can go, can correct this a bit. And 
Pepsi. All right, so he's starting to get a bit of a, a bit of volume. So let's turn off maybe this layer now. So you see the occlusion I did underneath because it's both on multiply, um, which is a blending mode that we use a lot. You know, if I put a shadow, another like major shadow layer on top, I don't lose what I did with the occlusion. You know, I can paint over it, and you know, uh, yeah, it, it it works together. So now you know you're starting to see the chin come forward because of this this shadow, right? Um, and then you know, it's just also a question of how you know over edge control, for example, how soft you want these um, shadow shapes. Um, and again, it's a lot on this is artistic freedom, I guess. So. Here, all this. This could all be in shadow a bit. And maybe I can put a bit of shadow to push out his eyebrow. Ah, so here maybe we can go so like that. Again, the hair and invert so I don't paint on the hair. And we can go, we could also just do some drop shadow first. Uh, so like this, you know. Oops. You know, and as you do this, you basically push and pull. You know, you use the eraser and you use the brush and just get uh, until you get to something until it's something that you like. Okay, and then we can do the, we can shade this whole thing so it becomes, oops, becomes a bit darker. All right, so by doing this, I'm starting to get this this shape of the of the of the eyebrow. Right, I'm just putting shadow on top of it because again we're, we're looking at a 3d uh, object and if the light is on top this surface that is going you know in the same direction as the light wouldn't receive as much um, shading as the one which is the eyebrow that starts to go up right so it kind of does this and this part of the you know this part of the eyebrow would be brighter you know and the tendency sometimes is to just brighten things you know but you can just play with shadow actually first because you can get the same effect i just darken the the thing on the top and then the thing under it becomes brighter and I don't need to actually add more light to it. Um, okay. What I like to do also is, you know, usually because again, when the form turns away from you, the also the surfaces that are not facing uh, the light anymore, for example, this bottle, right? So these surfaces on the, on the edge, I like to usually just go slightly darker, very softly. so it starts to create uh, some extra volume, right? So if I just do a bit of this on the side, you know, you don't necessarily need to go overboard or you don't need to super, you know, directly see it, but you're gonna feel it when you do this. Okay, and maybe, you know, again, maybe the whole, whole this whole part is in shadow, this whole year. I have something here. Okay, and then of course around the eyes, we shouldn't forget. Eyes are usually the focal point. You know, we see them on any image. We tend to go towards the eyes, so it's important to make sure okay, they stand out nicely. So again, you know, he has indentations here, and all the color variation I did underneath, you know, blends with these shadow layers, and I don't lose it. You know, there, it's still there. So it doesn't um, doesn't go away, basically. And again, here, since it's a 3D object, I'm going to put a bit of a lip on the bottom. Same here. Right. 
Yeah, it's starting to look like something. Uh, Okay, let me go to the eyes. This is basically, you know, if you enjoy doing this stuff, this is the part where you just zone out and, uh, you know, enjoy this noodling process, I call it. So, uh, you know, there's not much to it. You just go through everything and um, try to do the best that you can. Okay, let's do the eyes. So for the eyes, I tend to choose since they're yellow, you know, usually with yellow you want to maybe go with something warmer as the shadow, in, if you're doing something cartoony. In real life, it wouldn't happen, you know, so blue and if there is a bit of a blue light in the shadow with a yellow surface would turn green. But since this is a very cartoony piece, you know, I can do what I, whatever I want basically. So I can go more red and, you know, this. Because these are spheres, it's sometimes easier to do this, the opposite. Or maybe even actually take a soft brushy, which is a, more of a circle. And I just do this. And the same here. Okay. What else? All right. We have, I usually also do at this point or at some point I do another layer um, with which I put maybe on overlay or some other blending mode, but overlay is quite quite nice to, to handle things. And it allows me to add some extra light or, you know, color vibrance into, into all these things. Let me just see if I do this actually. I'll put another layer mask here. Uh, all right, so this then allows me to do, you know, bring out the front a bit if I want, you know, again, to get some extra three-dimensionality. And you don't want to go overboard. You want to go softly with this usually. Um, but, you know, it just starts, can bring your design a bit more to life. Um, maybe on the chin down here okay so the on the Photoshop this stuff goes a bit faster usually because it's a bit more easier here you have to click on everything there you have more shortcuts but um, you know and you can extra even add extra volume with this in this stage right so without this it's a bit flat, and then it starts to get some 3D shape, right? And I can also do a bit on the eyes to get some extra satur saturation on them. If this will work. <laughs> okay. And again, you know, just try until you find what, what you like, basically. Any questions? Are you guys bored? Are you asleep? <laughs> it's almost it's almost over, <laughs> and Friday is tomorrow. So, um, uh, yeah, maybe in this layer. Sometimes I do also then the speculars, which is, you know, these are basically shines that you get from shiny objects. You know, actually, in a way, every object has a specular. A highlight uh, in real life as well, but it depends on the surface. It really is a tool that you can use to create, um, to explain uh, to the viewer basically what kind of material it is, right? So if I do a sharp little dot here, right, it looks like a shiny 
a shiny object, a very like glossy, like a like a pool pool ball. Um, but if I, for example, make it softer, then it's gonna look like something less shiny. For example, you know, and this is just something you control with this, you know, um, with the sharpness of the highlights, basically. So where are we here? And you can play with this, do whatever you like, basically. Because the goal is to have fun. A little bit of a shine on the hair. just like to break it up a bit, make a bit of variation in the edges and, you know, maybe even some cuts if you want to. But, you know, usually even, even when you're doing any type of hair or whatever, you should think about it as a, a whole volume, not, you know, this whole shape has one volume, not like individual strands. So depending on the style as well, in this case, something like this is maybe better. And, you know, we make it fade out a bit and has a little bit of a hair shine. I can do some here as well. Ah, we forgot the fork. So the fork is <laughs> the story element, which is, you know, very simple thing, but uh, it's just something like with the other characters that I did, that you can just basically invent, put whatever you want. Um, and it should work. Let me just pick the right color. OK, where are we? You can ask me also about, you know, not about drawing, also about the, the work or whatever, if you like, uh, you know, um, just, just saying. And we have a fork. You can put a bit of shine on it so it we kind of understand it's a shiny material. You know, and all those characters on Fortnite and stuff, usually, you know, they, they typically have some somewhat of a similar process. When we do more complex characters, it's, you know, either this or some other established process. but. You know, the key word here is process. Without the process, you don't, you're not, uh, you're setting yourself up for more experimental work rather than, you know, uh, a thought out design and a thought out uh, uh, color and, and render. Um, all righty. Maybe on this. Oh, sorry. Uh, where are we? So here. The, the problem with this uh, method, method with multiplayer layers is that you have to, if you want to, to pick the same color, you have to put them back into normal mode and then go back to undo and then go back to here. So we can you know, just put, put a little bit of an indication of some, you know, like he has kind of a shirt, I guess. Um, Color. All righty. Again, a bit of specular, right? Because the tongue is moist, it's usually 
usually shiny because you have some saliva on it or whatever. Um, you know, I could do the same inside the mouth, but I don't want to drag too much attention. Um, the mouth is the only thing I didn't shade in, with the multiply because it's just easier based on, on Procreate layer economy that I don't need to fiddle too much with the layers. I mean, um, I can just do directly on this mouth shape and just go darker if I want. And then maybe I decide also I want some more violet here under his eyes, right? We can do that easily. Right. Again, maybe we want some specular here because it's uh, around the eyes is also usually a bit moist. You know, you need you don't want to go overboard, but sometimes you know you can do a bit also on this this bag under the eyes. Some guys sometimes get a bit a bit uh, wet. Okay, I think I want to maybe punch up his face a little more. All righty, and last but not least, is I sometimes like to do. And yeah, actually this, what we have set up here, it allows me to do very quick changes to whatever I like, right? For example, if I want to do black eyes, you know, all the shading, all the specular work, you know, maybe if this specular was a bit brighter, it would be more shiny, for example, but you know, I can just also change his eyes and just, uh, I don't know, we could do, You know, even this without pupils, it also has a specific look. Maybe you want to go for this, you know, but maybe we can go with huge eyes, right? Because I have all that layered, I can really quickly change the, my designs. And that's, that's basically why this process is versatile and why it's used quite a lot in the industry, because it's quick to change stuff. You know, my art director comes in, tells me I need a red face instead of a green one. No problem. I can have it very quickly. Um, um, you know, usually the design is at this stage is, is a, a different thing. You know, it's a bit harder to change. Um, so you, that's why it's important to have a good <laughs> production process that you confirm these designs before. Um, but yeah, um, this is this is why this is so useful usually. All right. So then, so what we do usually is we duplicate, yes, and then I flatten, and then I mask and you know as with a lot of designs nowadays you gotta have some rim light so you know and rim light is another tool that just helps you um, show the form a bit more you know I put some extra volume on on the on the things or even detail that you want right so you can go there I don't like to use it a lot, like I mean, do do big um, pieces of, of rim light. I just like to use it a bit, um, you know. But you can, for example, make his cheek here feel like it's three dimensional using rim light, and then you put it here. Right, and it just starts to give a bit of dimensionality on that side of the of the character. You know, I could even do this on the ear, maybe. Um, yeah, and then, you know, in a layer like this, it's usually when, you know, you have this base rendered, for example, and that's where you can also then go in just on a normal layer, right, and 
I don't know, if I want to make more of an eyeliner, you know, around his eyes um, to pop them out more, I can, right? I can go more black, for example. Um, you know, to make them step up, stand out more. Actually, I'm doing this a bit weirdly, but... You know, you can put the finer details, for example, here if you want here, or maybe you can do a little bit of a have a highlight uh, on this part and it's also where you can play with some texture for example you know you can you can add some brush strokes here you know to make a specific look that you want um, let's see on this maybe we can Yeah, and I think, you know, I could do this forever. I could do more detail. I can make it more rendered, but I think I can stop here, um, you know, so you don't fall asleep. <laughs> uh, that's my talk, more or less. You know, I hope this gave you a bit of a glimpse into how we do stuff, if you didn't know before. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and if, you know, feel so inclined, try this process out. Maybe it works for you. Thank you. Sure of this. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is visible. <laughs> this is where you can get in contact. It's Instagram QR code. Um, it clearly is not readable. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> it's just a link to my Instagram account. Um, so if you want, you know, um, you can write me there or whatever. Um, I'll be happy to answer anything. You know, I usually have no problem with this. So. So one question there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you give it to the 3D, to 3D artists. Yes. They create like the mesh, whatever, the texture. Yes. And this concept never sees the light, like nobody's going to see it. Usually, no. <laughs> and don't you feel like sad, like, oh, I need to see it? I cry at home all the time. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know, because it's a good question because the, uh, another question to this is also people ask me many times, you know, even at work, but aren't you sad even when you do all these designs and a lot of them just go to the trash and it's, you know, this is work. This is how it goes. You know, this is not your personal stuff. You know, you have to understand this is the process, you know, and you have to be normal with it. You, you shouldn't fall in love with your work. That's the important part. You know, that that's what makes you a good professional. You know, if if you do. You know, if uh, you do a character design like this, and I'm your art director, and I say, "Ah, oh, this is shit," you know, we need to change it, be or we need to change it because of you know whatever reason, um, and you don't give me a hard time, you know, that you're like, "Oh, you know," instead of this, you're like, "Okay, what do you want to change?" You know, that's that's usually the right attitude to have, you know, um, because you can accomplish much more, you know, in this way. Because you know, my job as an art director is to try to make your art better, for example. Um, and I'm not there, you know, to, to bitch slap you about your work. I'm there to try to help, you know, people. So, yeah. Um, in, in, in short, to your question, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sad. You know, it's part of work. It's actually, it's actually a bit the opposite because you do this and then someone takes this and it becomes 3D and it starts and it's animated and you're like, fuck, this looks amazing, you know, and you see it in game and then you can be proud. Like, this is something I designed, you know, with my hands. It's not the 3D guys, for example, you know, I designed this, I put the colors there, I put the shapes there, right? It's my idea. So it's actually the opposite. <laughs> and they show you one second, like the 3D model. Mm -hmm. They show it to you, like, are you okay with it? They show it to the original concept artist? Yeah, it, it, it depends on, on different uh, companies, of course. Uh, some are more hierarchical, you know, some are more like uh, go directly to art director or no one else, you know, I mean, um, but in, in our case, for example, we try to, you know, get the people to talk. We try to be, you know, me being an art director doesn't really, in my mind, mean that much. You know, you can talk to anyone. So if someone else designed this, I usually tell them, you know, talk to the person that designed, you know, you figure it out together. You know, if you need my help, I'll come. But usually it's better if they work together because it also builds their relationship as well. You know, so, yeah, they usually go together and then, you know, the concept artist says, ah, but, you know, here maybe you did a bit of a, a too fat shape. Can we make it slimmer? Or maybe the thing I designed, these teeth, you know, the 3D guy says, ah, this won't work because when you animate, I don't know, the teeth clip into each other, you know, they, 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 it's not visually pleasing. Can we change it? And then, you know, either we do an overpaint or the 3D artist just change it themselves 
because they're also very skilled. You know, we have a very talented team. So, yeah, this is usually back and a bit of back and forth in these cases. Um, yeah, more questions? <laughs> you know everything. Ah, sorry. I have studied actually, um, what's the first word? Culturology. <laughs> yeah, don't ask. It was for one year. Um, and then I went to, uh, it's called a multimedia college, which was more, you know, uh, a shitty college just to get money from people more or less. So, you know, it wasn't related to art. You know, art is something I did since I was a kid. I love, I couldn't stop drawing. You know, in, at school I was just, instead of writing, I was drawing. I was one of those kids, you know, and my teachers were very fed up with me, but it's, it's how I learned. I'm a very self-taught uh, person, and sometimes it also shows, you know. I don't, I don't have maybe some, of the, the, um, maybe some of the fundamentals that people in art schools learn, you know. I, I had to learn it the hard way, you know, with myself, by myself. So, you know, college is not always the end-all, be-all. It helps you get a nice base, but if you really want to do good stuff, you need to put in a lot of your own effort and love. That, that's why I said at the start, it's very important to stick to, to figure out what you like and to stick to it. This is the, it's the best chance you'll have to, you know, keep working on it uh, day in and day out because um, it will be fun. Okay. More questions? Yeah. Learn, definitely learn. I, I think personally, I'm, I'm the, you know, there's two clubs <laughs> of people. One say talent is everything, and the other, which I mean, is like, no, it's not. It's hard work. You know, if you, if you draw enough, you're going to start to, you know, understand how you draw it. And if you also apply, you know, what a good part about a little tip I can give if you're trying to learn drawing is learn how to analyze things. You know, so if I look at an artist I like. I start to dig, uh, dissect it, you know, either I split it up into what I want to dissect or just go, okay, why, what do I like about this, you know, for example. Ah, maybe it's the overall shape, the, the way it's uh, simply designed. Maybe it's the colors. Okay, so what about the colors? There is nice uh, hue variation between light and dark, right? There are schools and, 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 and yellows um, working together, which creates this nice effect. Um, maybe it's the way I, I do expressions, for example. You know, you just dissect, you go piece by piece and figure out um, what you like. And then you try to apply it to your work. And sometimes when you do studies, for example, you can do a study of something like this and you just focus on one thing. I'm going to focus on the design or I'm going to focus only on an expression. Everything else I don't care about. You know, so you make it easy for yourself. And yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, if you draw enough, you're going to eventually, you know, learn uh, to be good enough, for sure. Talent is really not something that, that plays a big role, I think, you know. Um, it, what is important is actually also that you're a, a decent person, you know, person, you know, <laughs> at work, so people can can work with you. Uh, I don't know why I'm still at this uh, place, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But this talent thing is always. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, but. This kind of goes to what I just said in a way, right? One is copying just for copying. Like you can trace this and, you know, I copied, which you are going to learn some stuff, you know, granted. But better, the better thing is to, to remember analyzing stuff, right? If you copy this, try to do it on your own and copy one thing. Copy the shape, uh, shape language. Copy the colors. Copy the, you know, go, go bit by bit, at least at the start, because it can be overwhelming. And that's, that's the problem. But otherwise, it's a, it's a very good way to learn, you know? You copy masters, you copy. It's kind of like how we all learned in a way, right? When I was a kid, I was drawing stuff that my favorite artist was drawing. You know, I, I used to grow up on Warcraft, you know, and, and Blizzard games, and I was like just drawing orcs all the time. Like, you know, I was looking at what that Samwise dude was doing at Blizzard, and I was like, oh, fuck, this is awesome. And I just had pages and pages of this shit, you know. And at the time, I actually didn't even know how to analyze things, you know. So in hindsight, if I knew then, you know, it would be much faster. <laughs> um, <laughs> and now I'm actually still learning quite a lot. <laughs> uh, definitely a good technique. Yeah, just, just have a process uh, about it. So you start uh, learning by copying? Yes. Yeah, I mean... I mean, it sounds weird, but you don't Yeah, in a way, you know, it's a bit is copying, but it's still the first for me is what I like. You know, because you have also, there's also a few people, for example, if you're really interested to, to learn stuff super fast, right, then create a schedule. 
I'm going to study anatomy, you know, do this, you can do that, and you can copy masters and stuff like this with this analytical mindset, that's great. But some people also can't do that, and I'm not wired like that, for example. You know, I do studies every now and then, but not every day, for example, right? Um, and I focus more on creating a new piece that where I go out of my depth, you know, like, for example, a new style, and I look at other uh, styles that I like, maybe, okay, I'm going to try this style, and that's how, you know, I basically copied the style, not so much what is there, right? So I, I, I do my own design, but with that style. Does that make sense? So, you know, that's also still copying, but it's not, it's, it's copying the, the understanding the way things are done instead of just, just copying. 